I was thinking about science programmes the other day and how they've changed since they were presented when I was a kid. I remember I used to, I've always loved technological and science videos and space videos and stuff like that. I, the programmes that you used to watch on telly like Horizon and Planet Earth and all those kind of programmes. And then um, I still watch them today. I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos as well. That's, that's how technology has moved on and how times have changed. But one of the things that I have noticed is when I used to watch a programme on the BBC or even an ITV programme explaining, I don't know, about the stars and the universe or geology and how the rocks are formed and stuff like that, they were always talking really hard, solid facts. This is this this is this star, and it's this far away, and it was formed like this, and it happened like that, and this is the way that it is. Here is some uh, rock strata. This rock strata was formed by sediments landing on top of each other and being squashed and compressed, and all this sort of thing. We were just absolutely factual about things. Particularly, or should I say, including sciences about the atom, um, the subatomic level and stuff like that. They were always given to us as, this is what it is, this is how it is. But there's no question about this, this is just how it is. Whereas nowadays, the way the, the way programmes are presented and the way science is presented is it's much more we believe our current thinking the way we understand it now it, it's it's more general it's more vague it's less this is how you'll think and it's much more this is where we are at the moment and for, for the most part i think it's a very good thing um and well, why is this? Well, science is always changing. What we know is always changing. And we, for thousands of years, we, we didn't know what an atom was. And then we, we've worked out what an atom was and we found ways of demonstrating it. And we were absolutely sure that this is, this is it. This is how things are made up. This is how things are put together. This is how the, the world is. And it's made up of these little... Uh, electrons and protons and neutrons well before we knew about them we just said well these are atoms these are what the minimum building blocks are and of course we've now discovered things like atoms and protons and photons and leptons and muons and we keep on discovering more and more of these atoms or particles I should say and it, it I think we're becoming aware that we're going down a rabbit hole that might not actually have a bottom because of course presently our understanding to coin the phrase is that you know electrons are a single point and we can't get any smaller and maybe quarks and neutrinos are as well but we seem to be much more willing to accept the idea that in another 10 or 100 or a 1,000 years, somebody will drill down even deeper and say, ah, well, actually, we've got strings or we've got... Uh, well, it, it's impossible for us to imagine at the moment. And the, I think the good thing about this... I think Well, I think the reasoning for this is because scientists are getting used to being proven wrong which is a good thing and I dare say a good scientist embraces being proven wrong we have this idea we think it works we think it helps we can get things from this but I am open to the suggestion that well there may be a better way of thinking about it a classic well the, the modern example of that is of course um, we were talking about leptons and muons and is what they call the standard model listen to the word the standard model it's not how things are it's a model as to how things are and we can use this model 
to make predictions and so far the model is proving useful but it would take a very brave, brave science to say that it's a scientist to say that it's right it's useful we can do things with it we can further our knowledge with it we can gain deeper insight with it but it is just a model nobody seems to be claiming anymore that this is it this is how it is and that leaves that leaves science much more open to new ideas to 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 take on op, uh, open minded people who some of the open minded stuff might be way out out there and so far out that it seems ridiculous but I think science is built on the fact that for every thousand or even ten thousand ridiculous ideas there's just one ridiculous idea that proves to be helpful or may even prove to be right and science is they always say is one percent inspiration and ninety nine percent perspiration I like the way that they talk about science now. I like the fact that they're much more open to the idea that they could be wrong. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. <laughs>